Chat Kilo Juliet Four Yankee Zulu India. Uh, KJ Four Yankee Juliet India. Come on back. Yeah, Kilo Juliet Four Yankee Zulu India. Just playing around with this tuner and this uh, random wire antenna. You're really strong here again. Uh, but uh, I think I checked in before. Just wanted to make sure it's still working. Ever. Good sail. You're up to S nine. All right, the ten watts. You're about an S nine plus twenty here. In the Florida, I think I'm on the opposite side of the coast of you, Roger. Roger, Roger. Yes, I'm in Tampa, and I'm running 100 watts, so that, that's great. You're doing well, Eric. Thank you very much for the recheck, buddy. Thank you, 7-3. All right, All right, so... KJ4, Thank you to Chameleon Antennas for sending me their new automatic antenna tuner and letting me check it out. It's kind of fun. I'm going to play with this a little bit. You'll see it in some videos moving forward. Now, this automatic antenna tuner, for those who need a tuner, okay, there's some tuners out there on the market that frustrate people because you need a specific cable for a Yaesu or an ICOM or whatever radio, or it needs to match with this antenna or with that radio. No, this antenna tuner can be used with any antenna, any radio, no specific cable, transceiver cable interface needed. All you need to do is transmit a solid carrier into this like on CW or RIDI, and it will match anything from 5 to 1500 ohms with 16,000 memories in only seconds, and it can be used with coaxial type antennas here, or if you want to use random length or end fed, right here. This is called a beehive connector. There's a ground screw here. <clears throat> now, two of these things here exist. The coupler unit, or the coupling unit, okay? This is where all the, this connects between your transceiver and uh, your coax feed line that goes to your antenna. And power is injected onto the coax using a bias T that's built in to power this outdoor unit. Now, this outdoor unit is, this is solid. This is heavy, this is metal, okay? This is made for 100% outdoor use outdoor weather uh, elements, okay? And the thing about this is, I don't use tuners at all anymore. I use resonant antennas. Um, people have, I, I made a video years ago and, and I got you know attacked by it because here's the deal. You could take this tuner and probably load up a stop sign or a fluorescent light bulb out front in your driveway. That doesn't mean that that's a good antenna, okay? Just because your antenna or your radio says that there's a match going into the back of it does not mean that you're efficiently radiating your power. People have contemplated with me and called me various names in the book, but this is designed for those who want to have one antenna that will cover most all the bands. This will do 160 meters to six meters, okay? And if I remember, the power will be 125 watts from 160 to 10, uh, on single sideband, and then on single sideband on six meters, it will do 100 watts. And then if you want to use RIDI, FT8, digital modes, it would be around 50 to 60 watts on that. You know, when you have a full duty cycle, your, you know, uh, single sideband has peaks with the modulation. A full duty cycle with like FT8, it's going to be usually half of your power rating on an antenna or a tuner, okay? Now, <clears throat> the, the thing about this is, the, the reason I like this is because this is designed to be put at the antenna, all right? If you read the manual, the manual will tell you that there's random, if you want to use a random length antenna, right? Random wire. You just throw a wire out, you hit it with this thing, and away you go. Well, there are certain lengths of cable or, or antenna line that you want to avoid, and that is not because of this, that's because of random length theory, okay? Random wire theory. Now, there, there's, so let's say you follow the manual and you put a piece of wire on here, I'm gonna guess 71 feet maybe, right? And you hang, you go up with that, you make it a sloper. And you hook your ground counterpoise up to here and you hit the tune button. Well, what's gonna happen is this plus that wire and this equals 
your tuned antenna. <clears throat> Everything coming out of this that goes to your coupler here is a good match, all right? Let me reiterate this now. If I take that NFET over here that's 3D printed, which I can't reach now, okay? That thing might be a six to one SWR on 17 meters, okay? So you run that coax into the back of your radio and you hit the automatic antenna tuner. That is not tuning that antenna, no. That is providing a match between a six to one SWR and your final output power amplifier section to make sure that your radio is outputting 100% of power. That is if you have an internal antenna tuner. This is going to have everything tuned until it comes out of here. Like, like for instance, from here up, okay? Everything that comes out of this coax, coupler coax that goes to this is a good, perfect match. Does that make sense? This plus this equals good, all right? That's why I like remote tuners. And this being part of that, you could put a wire on here, put this at the base of a mast. You could put this at the base of a vertical. That is a four band vertical, um, you know, and let's say the, the best you can get on that four band vertical is like a 2.5 to one on 40 meters. Well, at the base of the vertical, this is going to match that vertical. And everything coming out of here is tuned all the way back to your radio. No need to use your tuner in your radio. And if that makes sense, I know, leave a comment right here. Just click the unsubscribe button right when you're done with that. Um, okay, so we're gonna put this on. Like I said, all you need to do is connect power to this, okay? And there's a tuning button here. So what you do is you, essentially, I'll show you. You key up, okay? You, you send a solid carrier like RIDI or CW. You key up, you hit the tune button, and it's gonna find a match. It's gonna put it into memory. Once it finds that in the memory, if you ever return to that frequency on that setup, it's gonna right away, go right back to that memory of the inductance, the inductance, the capacitance, the resistance, or whatever it used in this network to make that match, to make your antenna tuned, okay? I guess let's hook it up and give it a shot. So the easiest way to use this would be a random length of wire. Now I have some PTFE wire here. Um, and I'm going to put this on the Beehive connector on top and run this from my tripod over here, uh, over that way somewhere and see, you know, how it tunes. Uh, this is the easiest way. Throw a random length piece of wire. A again, looking at the manual, there are certain lengths you want to avoid for certain frequencies, but we're going to, we're going to start off with this one. I'll try to measure it or see what's going on and, uh, let's see what happens. We did, we did good last oh time. Oh my so I hope gosh! We can do the same tonight. I listen, listen. I, I didn't have the camera rolling. I promise you. Okay, so I set this up. Now the universal remote tuner, the Chameleon tuner here. There's the tuning unit, which should be as close to the feed point of the antenna as possible, or as we've set up just now, which I've never done before a random wire antenna. Now, I have some PTFE wire connected to the top right there, okay? And I have this on my carbon fiber mast and I have that wire right here, which is the counterpoise wire. I set this up, oh my gosh, I set this up, okay? And I, now I did not measure that antenna wire. That wire is going all the way over to here. Right there, okay? <clears throat> and um, so I'm gonna show you how this thing works, but when I just pushed the button at 10 watts to the YL system, he, he couldn't believe it. He could not believe I was on 10 watts. I, I was just amazed before I even had the answer, or the, uh, the, the ambition to grab the camera, right? So that should be as close to the feed point as possible, which I have it with the random length antenna. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this thing tunes right now. This is up about 25-ish feet, okay? And our pet raccoon, hey baby, mama, mama. Yeah, she likes to eat. All right, let's check this out. Yeah, we're uh, looking for many more. Then All right, so okay, here we go. We can do for you? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how this works. <clears throat> I have my 705 at 10 watts. 
Okay, and what you're gonna do, this is a coupler unit here, coupling unit, there's a tuning button. You see the power, the tuner, okay? Now, I'm going to switch this to a solid carrier mode, like CW or RIDI, okay? And I'm gonna to go to a frequency. Now, when I transmit, you're gonna see the SWR is real high. But when I hit, <clears throat> when I hit the tune button, I can hear it. You can't hear it on the camera. It's going I can hear that unit up there tuning, and you're gonna see the SWR go flat. Ready? Watch this. Ready? Transmit. Tune. Done. Okay. Now, if I go SWR, nothing. It's flat. Okay. Let's let's do this again. Let's go to 10 meters. All right. 10 meters. Now. <clears throat> All right, let's go ready. All right now, I'm going to transmit. I'm going to hit, I'm going to hold transmit, hit the tuning button, and watch the SWR. And you can't hear outside what the unit's doing, but it's tuning. Ready? Here we go. Done. Okay, now. I have also the Kangol uh, Tango Sugar 950 Sierra Delta X-ray. It's a great linear. Uh, great now that just put that uh, in the memory, all right? Also, I have also the... Yeah. Uh, Sierra Delta X-ray. Uh, it's a great linear. Uh, great linear. Those lines are the solar on my RV. Let's go like this. Let's go to, yeah, let's go to 80 meters. Ready? Watch this. Done. There it is. Done. I can hear the unit on the pole. Probably not the best in the daylight. Let's go to 15 meters. Ready? Ready? Here we go. Done. There it is. I have your QRZ page up right now. It says we're uh, we're about uh, one thousand eight hundred forty-five point four miles away. So yeah, pretty good folk there. Uh, I like the shack. It's uh, simple and effective. Uh, on this end, I'm running a Yaesu FP710. Let's go like this. 17 Alpha. meters. Ready? Ready mode? Done. There it is. Now, if it lost you 30. Done. 30 meters. Now that's really noisy, probably with the solar. There's some radar, some whatever. That's noisy. Let's do six meters. Here we go. Here we go. All right, transmit, go. Done. You're on six meters. That fast. Now let's see if this does this on 160. Let's see. Ready? Ready? Done. There's 160 meters. Now, a 10 is not the best for 160, but watch. Now you go back to, to uh, 40 meters, right? It should have a memory. Done. There it is. There it is. I don't know. I live in a project over here on the beach. Come with your call. Great check. Kilowatt Charlie 1 Mike Romeo. Hello, 
been down. Ray, what's up today, buddy? Oh, nothing much. Just snapping in around and frying for lunch fries and doing all those great things. Can you give me a signal report? Go ahead. Can I tell? I got your cat over at nine. Okay, so as far as installation options, I chose one for this first video and we're going to try other ones. It's designed to be used as a remote tuner and a remote tuner is way different than having a tuner in your transceiver or behind your transceiver. Okay, so uh, we're, we're eliminating the the you know loss due to high SWR on the feed line. All right, and, and again, we're making the antenna resonant not matching your radio to a non-resonant antenna. All right, so here's the one I did here, okay? This was uh, this is an example here. What I did was put it on my mast. You have your tuner unit, which should be outside most of the time with a random length wire, random wire antenna, all right? And you have your counterpoise, you know, cable here. Your coaxial cable goes in the house. Um, insulating the wire from the top beehive connector to wherever it's going, okay, and insulating it from wherever it's attached to. So right here, a vertical, okay. Now let's say you have a vertical. Let's say you're making a vertical, right? Uh, a flagpole, um, uh, some sort of vertical that is not meant to be resonant on multiple bands, right? So you could take something like this, like a, a classic forty-three foot vertical, right, and put this right at the feed point now this tuner unit plus the vertical antenna and the counterpoise wire equals a resonant antenna for wherever you're tuning it and that outputs a resonant antenna out of the tuner to your radio all right so we're not just we're not just putting a tuner from inside your house outside this is operating differently. That's what a remote tuner does. Just trying to make sure everybody understands. This isn't just, you know, a regular tuner. Because you're going to say, well, I could find one of those on uh, wherever on eBay for, you know, $89. And it's this brand and I could do the same thing. No, not really. Because you're tuning it at the back of the radio. Just like a coaxial fed inverted V. Now we can do this with a inverted V, like an off-center fed, maybe a G5 RV. G5RV is not resonant everywhere. If you need to, you can put the tuner unit down here at the base of your mast, or if it's feasible, up on top, right below the feed point ballon area, okay? And then everything after that tuner is a tuned antenna to your radio, all right? So there's, you know, three different ways, maybe more, on, on using this, okay? And uh, basically, don't put anything in between the coupler and the tuner because there's power being passed through that. And with this, you won't need your in internal antenna tuner on your radio because it's going to be perfectly, you know, zero SWR at the back of your radio. No need to use your tuner in your radio, all right? So that's uh, the manual is very easy to follow easy to understand here's your full specs right here okay uh, 160 meters to 6 meters 125 watts single sideband phone and cw is um 100 watts or no 125 watts single sideband phone and cw 100 watts single sideband phone and cw on 50 megahertz or 6 meters and 60 watts all other modes those are RIDI, PSK31, FT8, JT65, etc. The tuning power range can be half a watt to 15 watts, five seconds for a full tune, okay, and 16,000 memories right here, 16,000 tuner memory frequencies right there, all right? And uh, yeah, it, the power supply is 12 to 14 volts DC at one amp. All right, so in a nutshell, I don't ever use random wire or or, or um, random length, you know, wires. You can do a lot with those. You could feed, you know, different antennas with, with a ladder line. There's a lot of things you could do. I don't do that. What I like to do is use resonant antennas. But a resonant antenna on 20 meters would be, let's say a vertical, would be roughly 16 feet, all right? So a 16-foot vertical, okay, with your appropriate counterpoise, 
would be resonant on 20 meters. What happens if you want to use that on 15 or 12? Well, it's not going to be resonant there. A antenna that is cut to specific frequency is only resonant on that frequency. And what that means is if you don't want to put nine verticals in the backyard, you can put a 40 meter vertical and normally with a tuner, you can use that 40 meter vertical on 40 down, you know, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, 6. But a 40 meter vertical is never going to perform good on 160 meters. Just like if you made a six meter, uh, six meter moxin beam, for instance, or a, or a six meter, uh, a six meter half wave dipole, okay? There are tuners <laughs> that will tune that six meter half wave dipole for 80 meters. That doesn't mean that that is going to work. Just, I'm just wanting to make sure that you understand just because your $900 PAL star antenna tuner told you that your stop sign was tuned on 160 meters, you're going to be sadly disappointed that you're not going to make contacts on that stop sign for 160 meters. Well, my radio says it's tuned. It's not. Okay. But if you want to use this with something like a multi-band vertical that may be resonant on 40, 20, 15, 12, and 6, right? Resonant, I say resonant, maybe it's, you know, 2.10 or less, right? This will clean that up and get that thing to where you need it to be. Or you want to take one piece of wire that's wrapped around this 3D printed cable winder, you want to throw it up in a tree and attach it to here, put this on a tree, Velcro strap it around, run a counterpoise, hook this up, one, two, three, away you go. Now, the thing to remember is, again, you cannot use a coaxial antenna or, or and a beehive random line at the same time, either or. So if you want to put your G5 RV here, great. If you want to put your random, great. Don't do both. doesn't work that way. And I want to thank Camellia because we got a lot more stuff to show, and I'm going to basically be showing that more. Hey, well, you know, I, I just got over COVID. Uh, that does exist here in 2024, and, um, you know, <laughs> work. That's the other thing that exists is life and family. So as soon as I can get these videos out, I will. All right, thanks. 7-3. Ham Radio Concepts. It's brought to you by hamradioprep.com. It's never been easier to learn about ham radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit hamradioprep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, hamradioprep.com. Dot com.